Jesus, the servant of our Lord. That's what we like to refer to today. I'm Pastor Richard Krause, Senior Pastor at Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. We also have a satellite in the city of Wauwatosa and another preaching area up in the town of Aaron. And uh, we invite you to join us for worship every Sunday and also as we have services throughout the week. We're going to be looking at a section of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 to 8. This is what we read there. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, the creator of the heavens, who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open the eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. The prophet Isaiah lived about 600 plus years before Jesus Christ walked on this earth. But he's spoken about as the fifth evangelist. Uh, there is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then there is the prophet Isaiah who speaks so clearly about Jesus. This is one of what we refer to as the servant songs of the prophet Isaiah here in chapter 42. And this section is uh, very clearly speaking about the Messiah. And this is reinforced because in the Gospel according to Matthew, uh, the words, the first four verses here of this text, are clearly spoken about as referring to Jesus Christ. There in Matthew, it's made very clear that this is what the prophet Isaiah had said about the one who was going to come, about the Messiah. And so, of all the passages in the Old Testament, those that are most clearly seen as being fulfilled are the ones that the New Testament writers make a reference to. And we think about these words. Huh? We're sort of familiar with these words. We're told a bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not blow out. Jesus comes and he mends lives. He mends lives like our own. Huh? We sin. We fall apart. We're uh, dealing with issues of health. People close to us die. We lose a friend. Um, at that phase of my life where classmates, um, you know, are dying. And uh, people I knew very well many years ago and were reminded of how this life is always changing. But Jesus is the one who mends our lives, who is there for us. This is the one who establishes justice. Justice today is a popular word. But here especially, I believe what is spoken about is Jesus takes those people who are forgotten people in this world, people who are neglected people in this world, the, the weak, the suffering. But in the end, in the kingdom of God, they will be there at the throne of their Savior. And they will reign in power and dominion. Things in this world are going to be changed out, if you will. Huh? Jesus Christ comes to bring justice. He comes as a light to the Gentiles. Thanks be to God that the message of salvation uh, went out to people outside the Jewish nation, probably like people like ourselves. Huh? We love the message of Jesus. We love Jesus, our Savior. He's done so much for us, and he continues to do that. Where would we be in this life without Jesus? He comes, and he comes to the Gentiles, and he brings us peace. He brings us wholeness and completeness in life. He washes us free from our sins. 
He's there as a constant in our lives all the time. And he's freeing us from our sins, as the text tells us. And the power of sin, the power of guilt, terrible things maybe we have said or done. He says they're forgiven. They're behind you. Move ahead. His glory, though he makes very clear, is not going to be given to another. And his praise is not going to go to idols. God be with you. I hope you treasure this section of the word which speaks about the servants of our God, the suffering servant Jesus Christ.